The best rewards for D&D are not the game-breaking magic items your players always ask for, but are the items that create the greatest memories at your table. So if you're a DM who wants to give your players the maximum amount of enjoyment for the least amount of effort, then today I've come up with a list of 100 non-magical items that you can steal to make your players think outside of the box, which will cause them to generate content for you without breaking your game. Item 1. A blue quail egg. Imagine your players find a blue quail egg uncracked and untouched. Will they guard it with their lives in hopes of one day hatching their very own pet? Perhaps they can hear pecking from the inside with a high enough roll. Or maybe they'll try and sell it for a buck or scramble it up and eat it with their breakfast. Item 2. A small pouch of dried corn kernels. Your players could potentially try popping these for popcorn or chew on them raw. Perhaps they could throw these kernels one by one at unsuspecting people walking by. Item 3. A book titled Overcoming Spell Addiction. This book is great for that one caster in the group who always blows through their spell slots before the end of the day. Item 4. A tiny one pound dragon skull. Now dragon skulls are usually worth a lot. What about a tiny dragon skull? Perhaps it could be crushed up and used as component for spells and potions. Perhaps your players could sell it. Or maybe you just might turn one of your players into a trophy hunter. Item 5. A pendant with a holy symbol. Perhaps your players could use this holy symbol pendant to disguise themselves as a member of the holy order. Item 6. A vial of poison. Is it a strong vial of poison or a weak one? Is it enough to kill a civilian? What about a high-ranking general? Watch your players find out the hard way. Item 7. A half-eaten churro. This item is great for conversation, as you will hear some of your players grossed out at the prospect of half-eaten food, whereas others will keep it in their inventory and still others will eat it up. Item 8. A toddler's rattle. This tells us a lot about the person it was on. Was the bandit they killed a father? Did he have a little child? This item will cause your players to think, or at the very least, walk around town annoying people as they shaka this maraca. Item 9. A bottle of perfume. This works great for your players who do not have prestidigitation. Item 10. A horseshoe. Perhaps your players can play a high-stakes game of horseshoes, or maybe they can just throw it at someone's face as an improvised weapon. Item 11. A poorly hand-drawn map. Now this is a great way to deceive your players, because the map can lead to something very valuable, but it doesn't have to be accurate. Item 12. A flask of vinegar. Let your players find out the hard way what's inside. Item 13. A bent crooked key. Watch your players try to figure out what this bent key opens. Perhaps they'll try and straighten it. What if it breaks in the process? Dreams destroyed. Item 14. A noble's seal. What better way to forge your identity in the fantasy world of medieval D&D than with a noble's seal? Pretend to be someone you're not? Sign me up. Item 15. A sack of salt. Just a large sack of salt can be a small one too. Watch your players put this sack of salt in their inventory like the kleptomaniacs they are. Item 16, a shard of obsidian. Watch this shiny rock capture your players' attention without giving them any real economic value. Item 17, memory knots. Whose knots were they? And what was the individual trying to remember? Item 18, a flask of wine. Watch your players get merry or try and sell it. Perhaps they'll keep it stored away only for it to go bad. Item 19, a rotten egg. Let it be eaten or let it be thrown. And if they keep it in their inventory for more than three days, let it be crushed. Mmm, juicy egg. <coughs> Item 20. A femur bone. Works great as a club, but who really wants to hold someone else's leg? I'm sure one of your players will. Item 21. A monkey wrench. Great way to fix problems if only there were nuts and bolts. Perhaps we'll turn an engineer out of your barbarian yet. Item 22. A spool of golden thread. I'd recommend valuing this spool at two gold pieces, because thread is very skinny, but watch your players still go nuts over the fact that it is made of pure gold. Item 23. A pair of bent spectacles. Was the owner a studious individual? Perhaps they were an inventor. They're probably dead, so your players will never know. But now, with the power of magnification, your players can burn ants. Item 24. Spider fangs. Were these mandibles trophies or scientific artifacts? Perhaps they're a good luck charm held by the previous owner. Do they still have poison? Item 25. A flask of crude oil. This is great for getting people's attention when you light it on fire. Item 26. A scorpion in a jar. Is it poisonous? Does it sting? Does it deal more than one hit point of damage? You can always dare one of your players to stick their hand in the jar and find out. Item 27. A turtle shell. Is it a large turtle shell or a small turtle shell? In the IRL island I grew up on, turtle shells were crushed into powder to make jello. Item 28. A mermaid necklace. Did it come from a mermaid, or was it from a mermaid fanatic? Perhaps it was from an estranged house of mermaid hunters that the victim your players just killed was a part of. Item 29. A royal flag. Nothing more patriotic than wrapping yourself in one of these and bursting your way into the capital. Item 30. 
a deed to a foreign land. If you don't want to be bothered by this, then make the foreign land so far away that your players never have any hope of reaching it. But this won't make them any less proud of being landowners in today's economy. Item 31, a shy chameleon. Watch your players struggle to find this critter as they roll for investigation every single time they remember it exists. Item 32, a stone with a glowing rune on it. Why is it glowing and what does it say? If your players do end up rolling a natural 20, make up something stupid because it was probably a practical joke from one mage to another. Item 33, a chess queen piece. Perhaps this was the individual's lucky queen. Perhaps this individual was a queen. Perhaps this individual was in love with the queen. Perhaps your players can start the new side quest of collecting every single chess piece in hopes of one day playing an actual game of chess in D&D. Item 34, 10 feet of chain. Chain is heavy and cumbersome, but watch your players grab this 10 feet of chain just in case so that they can one day interrogate that poor innocent creature you never planned to be a part of your story. Say lovey. Item 35, a copper bracelet. If your players don this bracelet, mention how it colors their skin over time. Item 36, a ship in a bottle. If your players aren't careful about how they carry this ship in the bottle, inform them that it is now broken after several days of travel. Item 37, an ogre's finger. Perhaps it's a good luck charm, maybe? Item 38, a metal leaf. Perhaps the individual it came from was a craftsman. Perhaps they knew a craftsman. Perhaps your players don't care and for some weird reason think that this metal leaf is the MacGuffin for your entire campaign. Item 39, a blacksmith's hammer. These do work as projectiles if thrown hard enough. Item 40, a stone idol. Was the victim whose body your players harvested religious? Perhaps they were a mason. Perhaps the idol is cursed. Perhaps the idol is blessed. Item 41, a shark tooth. Great for piercing, but not much else. But well, let's be honest, these things look epic. Item 42, a flask of spoiled milk. Your players might save this to be lobbed at one of their enemies in the future. I pity their foes. Or perhaps you don't tell them it's spoiled until after they've drinking it and begin to have bouts of diarrhea. Item 43, a set of spurs. Perhaps the victim was an equestrian cut quest a horse lover item 44 a satin top hat watch one of your players dress up to the nines item 45 a pan flute one of your players will be guaranteed to annoy the rest of your party with this instrument item 46 a block of sulfur this thing stinks but why was it on the victim was the victim from the nine hells Item 47, an exotic feather. Perhaps it's a quill. Perhaps it's a tickle tool. I would not be surprised if at least one of the DM's parties watching this video uses this to make the BBEG sneeze. Item 48, rabbit pelts. Perhaps the victim was a trapper. Perhaps the victim was a poacher. But why do your players need rabbit pelts? The truth is, not even they know, but they will hoard the rabbit pelts anyways. Item 49, a rolled up painting. Perhaps this painting is really valuable. Perhaps this painting belonged to the queen. Would be a shame if your players didn't take really good care of it. Item 50, a quill pen and ink. It's just a quill pen and ink. That's pretty much all we got for uh, item 50. Item 51, a pouch of gunpowder. Watch your players light it up to get people's attention. Alternatively, watch your engineer barbarian attempt to make projectiles. Item 52, a jar of pickled beets. Everyone needs to eat. But what about pickled beets? This legendary concoction has been forgotten since the dawn of time. Bring back the glory of pickled beets into your D&D campaign. Item 53, a pixie in a jar. This doesn't have to be a pixie, it could be a fairy. Perhaps this pixie grants wishes. Perhaps this pixie has spells. Perhaps this pixie wants to kill your players. Item 54, an earthworm. This singular earthworm has the potential to become your party's next NPC mascot. I mean, hey, I don't write the rules. Item 55, blackberries. A delicious snack that leaves an impenetrable stain. Item 56, a holiday lantern. Perhaps the victim was feeling festive. Perhaps there is a holiday in your setting that you would like to include, and this lantern is the lore gateway for your players. Item 57, a gold ring. Perhaps the individual your players killed was married. Shame on them. How could they do such a thing? Item 58, a hangman's noose. This is a great conversational piece for your players, as they try and figure out why it's there, when in reality, you watched an assassin NPC video and thought, hey, this would be a great idea. I'm gonna throw it in for no reason at all. Item 59, Candelabra. Shockingly, in real life, these things make for great improvised weapons. Item 60, an engraved arrowhead. What's the story behind this arrowhead? Once your players realize they have no hope of deciphering what the engraving is on this arrowhead, they'll simply throw it into their inventory because it looks cool. Item 61, a lover's locket. Imagine two painted images scrawled on each side of this locket. Who were the lovers? And what did your players just intrude upon? Item 62, a flagon of whiskey. I personally have witnessed players burn more whiskey than drink it. Item 63, a brass telescope. Perhaps the victim was a nautical engineer. Perhaps your barbarian could become a nautical engineer. Item 64, 
a skinning knife. Great for skinning creatures, but do raise both eyebrows when your players ask to skin the next humanoid. Item 65, a rabbit trap. Great for catching food or pets, but let's be real. When was the last time you really kept track of your player's rations? Item 66, a crowbar. Handy for reducing the DC when taking down doors. Item 67, a gecko. Watch your players fall in love with this little NPC that is essentially a skinny frog that can't jump. Item 68, a leather whip. Watch one of your players attempt to become Indiana Jones. Keep in mind that in real life, leather whips that are used in an Indiana Jones fashion wear quickly and eventually break. Item 69, a merchant's ledger. What juicy secrets can be found within the pages of this book? Contraband? Illegal substances? A jar of pickled beets? Item 70, a metal whistle. If one of your players does not use this metal whistle to annoy the crap out of your entire universe, then you're probably doing something wrong. Item 71, a bright red loincloth. Why was the individual carrying it? Were they wearing it? Because that would be awkward. Item 72, a mason's chisel. Was the victim a craftsman? Perhaps a hobbyist. Whatever now, it belongs to your players. Watch them have fun making tiny Easter Island heads on their short rest. Item 73, a stick of dynamite. Stick go boom. This comes in really handy when your players are in a pinch. Item 74, an embroidered pouch. This one's for the fashionistas of your group, as the rogue will definitely flip this. Item 75, tulips. Fresh tulips. Were they being delivered to a significant other? Perhaps there is a lover nearby, awaiting true romance. Perhaps your players once more ruined the lives of your NPCs. And these are just fun little ways of letting them know that. Item 76, a tinfoil hat. Perhaps it gives disadvantage on telepathy checks. You decide. Item 77, knuckle bones. Apparently they were all the rage before the D6. Item 78, a tome with a religious symbol. What secrets lie inside? Item 79, a corn husk doll. Perhaps it belonged to the daughter of the individual your players just killed. But let's be honest, these things are creepy. Item 80, a rotten apple. Looks great on the outside, don't tell them what's on the inside. Item 81, a white wig. Or a gray wig, anything to make you look old. Item 82, an accordion. I'd like to imagine one of your players covered in more weapons than they can carry with just a giant accordion sitting somewhere on their back. <laughs> Item 83, a glass eyeball. What does it do? Is someone watching? Item 84, a stuffed falcon. Perhaps the previous owner was a taxidermist. Or maybe they just wanted a stuffy to snuggle at night. Item 85, a metal file. Great for breaking out of prison. Item 86, one foot of metal wire. Great for breaking out of prison. Item 87, first aid bandages. Give your players the false hope of reducing the DC on their future medicine checks. Item 88, cigars. A great way to introduce your players to your D&D tobacco ring. Item 89, fishing hooks. In most RPGs, fishing can be quite boring, but in D&D, fishing is also quite boring. Item 90, smoked salmon. While fishing may be boring, most people can agree that smoked salmon tastes delicious. Item 91, a deck of playing cards. Imagine a game of slapjack, but with actual weapons. Item 92, a tin ladle. Was their victim the chef? Perhaps their victim was siphoning food from the chef. Perhaps the victim owned a soup kitchen where he served soup to the poor and needy. Wow, such monsters, your players. Item 93, a cast iron skillet. This works great as an improvised weapon. Perhaps fire damage can be applied if the skillet is glowing red hot. Item 94, a silver mirror. Find out who the vain one in your group is, as if you don't know already. <laughs> Item 95, a crow's foot. Like a rabbit's foot, but it's a crow's foot. Yeah, just a spindly old crow's foot. Item 96, a bar of soap for all your players who do not have prestidigitation. Item 97, a pocket watch. Wait, giving your players the ability to tell time in D&D? No, such power corrupts. Item 98, a labyrinth map. Make it impossibly complex so that even out of character, your players have no idea which way to go. Item 99, a fancy walking cane. Sells for a lot, but also works great as a club. The nastiest item of all is item 100, but I have thousands of more creative drop ideas that won't break your games in my PDF loot lands if you want more, link down below. The final item is a pouch of grubs. Are they a fisherman's bait, a griffin's snack, or perhaps a hungry man's lunch? It's protein, right? 